after that time, how much later did it take for you to start having kids? Wow. Um, after we got married, so it was six years. We, uh, we struggled in that area. She had quite a few miscarriages and, uh, and some period of time where there, I think in the first two years she had f six mis four or six miscarriages. I can't remember exactly. Um, but we had f four years of no pregnancies at all and going through all those fertility treatments and, and making the trips from Logan to Salt Lake to the uni university fertility um, clinic, you know. It was just, it was a lot of work. I can't remember the exact month, but it was in 1987. We had moved out of a, the apartment we were living in, Kitty Corner across the street into a house that was built in the 1880s. It was an old farmhouse, beautiful house. And, uh, and it was cheaper rent than what we were paying in our apartment. Uh, the, the, our landlord, he was just a good guy. He just wanted somebody who was gonna take care of his property, so he made sure our rent was kept cheap, was really affordable. Then there was, um, there was one night that Lisa and I were out. Um, we were out on a ride, and the way I see it, and, and she says it's a little bit different, and that's okay if she does, but the way I see it is I, I, I just got a feeling that I need to go home and call a certain friend. This certain friend, I guess I need to go back a little bit of time before this particular experience. So the, the, I was part of an elders' corn presidency, and this friend of mine, who uh, actually lived in the apartments that I had moved out of to, to this house, he was also in the same elders' corn presidency, and he called me one morning and, and said, "Hey, I have an assignment at the temple tomorrow. I can't make it to. Um, could you fill in for me?" And I said, "Absolutely, I'll take care of it." And at the temple that morning, I'm going through doing initiatory work and going through that process and we had a bit of a backup in the, in the process of that and uh, ordinance and in, in doing so we just kind of stood there and so the the officiator looked me at me in my eye and he said young man tell me about your family and i said well my wife and i've been married almost six years and we we can't have children and uh and then we started the process again started moving around so and then it got backed up again and we ended up, you know, we were sitting there waiting again. And he said, he said, young man, I think you may have referred to me by my name, you know, Brother McBride, because I, that's what, you know, he said, I feel Im the importance to tell you that you're going to have a son. And after your son is born, you're going to have a daughter. And then later on, another boy. And that was so profound. I just, it sh took me back. It was, wow. So I went through the rest of that process and I got home and I told Lisa what I had experienced. And we immediately got down on our knees and thanked our Heavenly Father for that blessing. We didn't know what was gonna come of it. We just know that that was a very, very powerful blessing. And um, that's when it leads up to where this, uh, you know, we got this, feeling that we need to go home and call this person. His name was Dave Montague, and I felt that I needed to call him, and I reached out to him. And, and he said, where you been? I've been trying to get a hold of you. And I said, well, we went out on a ride, whatever. And he said, do you want to adopt a baby? And I said, what? <laughs> and he told me about the situation. He says, I, I, had, I was in Logan today with my attorney, because he was being sued by his former company. And he says, my attorney has a client who is gonna be having a baby in four months and the people who are lined up to adopt her baby backed out of it. And so he's looking for somebody who can adopt this baby. So he put me in touch with him. I got a hold of that attorney the next day, told him our situation, you know, that we were just young and broke like everybody else. And, and he, you know, he got some information from us. And then the next day he called me back and he said, I don't know your religious affiliation but I know mine, and I know that I couldn't sleep last night because I knew I need to communicate with you that we're gonna let you adopt this baby, and we'll work with you any way we can to get this baby in your home. His name is Spencer. Um, he is pure, pure blood, full Mexican. Um, his biological parents were both Mexican, and, and that doesn't matter. Um, but, so she had a, she had a, a 
13-month-old daughter that uh, she was trying to raise and she just didn't think she could raise two kids. So the agreement we had with the attorneys is that we would pay her medical bills, her rent, and buy any necessary food and clothing for her. And so we had to raise a lot of bit of money to make this work. And so we went, went through. There were times on Sunday or Saturday mornings, get up, that was at a time when I was working retail and had, had a strange schedule. I didn't, I had weekends off, which was really unusual for retail. But um, we'd get up and there was bags and bags of groceries on our front porch. You know, so we saved grocery money because we, we had people giving us groceries. There were people who they put money in our mailbox, uh, you know, to help us get through that. Um, our landlord lowered our rent, he cut our rent in half so it would help us to raise this money. Because we had to come up with $10,000 in a four month strat, a span to, to be able to make this work. And we were able to do that. And uh, so we, on the day of his birth, November 10th, we were called to, to go down to Provo, is where he was born, and we needed a hurry because she was wavering and she was changing her mind. So we, uh, we left Logan. I don't know how long it took us to get there, but I do know that we did not hit a single red light from the minute we left our house. We, uh, from all the traffic lights in Logan through all the traffic lights in Brigham City, once we were on the freeway, it was smooth sailing all the way to Provo and not a single red light in Provo we got right to the hospital. So, I mean, it's the, every light was in our favor. And, and so we got there and uh, the, um, the nurse that was there, she said, yeah, she's, she's changed her mind and she's gonna keep him. And so we had to have, there was a translator there. And so I, I explained through the translator that we respected her decision. And, but she needed to know that with that decision, we were no longer gonna pay her rent or her clothing or her groceries or her medical bills. We were done from that point on. And immediately there was a representative from the hospital who left. And I know at that point in time, she was going to talk to the administrators or whatever saying, these people are not gonna pay for her bills anymore. They're done. And, and uh, so we left and went to my in-laws house to spend the night, which was a halfway point between Provo and Logan. And we stopped in Ogden. To this day, I don't know how he got our, our my in-laws phone number. There was no cell phones then, <laughs> so we didn't have a cell phone. But the next day, we were backing out of the driveway when her mom came out of the, out of the house saying, your attorney's on the phone, he wants to talk to you. <laughs> it's so, we went back in the house and, and I picked up the phone and I, and I said hello and he said, Todd, this is so so I can't remember his name now. She's changed her mind again. She wants to give the baby to you and Lisa. And can you, how long will it take you to get here? I said, we can be there in an hour. Our plan was to name him Spencer Todd. And, but Lisa being the, the person that she is, had spent some time with her. And she asked her, um, through a translator, she asked her, what, what were you gonna name him? And she said, Josue, which is Spanish for Joshua. So his name is Spencer Joshua McBride. So we we're so very grateful for the, the gift. That was a gift that she gave to us. So I guess what the big biggest learning um, through the adoption process is, is probably patience. Um, we had to have it. And, and there was times that I, probably pretty certain that we got under each other's skin a little bit. Um, you know, that's probably natural. Um, so, but I think we learned patience. I think we learned how, how to love each other, um, you know, and work together because uh, we really didn't know fully what was gonna, what was gonna happen. And we, you know what, what an experience for Lisa to, to go to her and tell, you know, ask her, what were you gonna name him? Name him. What an amazing and incredible experience of love. She didn't know this, this young lady at all, but she knew her enough that she loved her for what she was going through. And she told, you know, she, she told her, you know, we'll take care of him, you know. And, and she asked at one point if she could have, if we could send pictures every now and then, which, which we did. And then eventually that just kind of stopped. But, yeah, she had an incredible love for this young lady uh, for going through what she went through. Incredibly enough, that night um, that she had decided to keep him, um, 
what one thing she told my wife was that she couldn't sleep at all. He was just crying all night long and she couldn't get the necessary sleep she needed and she realized that she was making the wrong decision. And that's why we ended up back down there to, to take our son home. And, you know, I found it really interesting that the night, our first night at my in-law's house with our baby, he slept all night long without a peep. I can only imagine that he even knew, being so young, he knew that he was in the appropriate hands that he needed to be in. And that's why he slept soundly. Spencer's taught us, taught us a lot. He, uh, you know, he's very, very intelligent. Uh, was intelligent all the way through his school years. He has, when he wants to do something, when he sets out to do something, he sticks with it until he gets it done. He wanted to go to, you know, he, he wanted to go to work in Denver once. Um, you know, he was, had, he'd, he'd gone through the cosmetology school at a place here in Napa. He was doing such a good job there that he had people coming and offering him jobs before he even graduated because he was doing, you know, he was doing so well. And the Ulta company um, wanted to hire him, you know, and he ended up going to Ulta. Uh, you know, he couldn't get a license to do hair because he hadn't graduated yet. So he worked for Ulta a little bit, but he, um, he ended up, I can't remember the scenario, the reason he went to Denver, but I took him to Denver because that's where he wanted to go because he felt his opportunities were stronger in Denver. So we, we had that opportunity. We spent all that entire drive, just him and I driving from Idaho all the way to Colorado. And, and uh, you know, and it was just quite an experience. The favorite things I have about each of my kids, I just told you what, about Spencer. So Lindsay, our daughter, one thing, her and I have a special relationship. Whenever we talk, it's, it starts off, either she'll start the conversation or I will. One of us will say, I'll say, hello, daughter. And she'll say, hello, father. <laughs> then we'd have our conversation. Yeah, she's, uh, she loves her kids, all three of her boys. She just loves them and, and she expects them though to, to behave appropriately and, and whatnot, but she does, she loves them. Okay, so Kendall. He, again, he's, uh, he's really kind of passive. Growing up, he was very passive aggressive. You know, he, uh, you know, stubborn. <laughs> you know, he didn't want to, if he didn't want to do something, he wasn't going to do it. And the whole time I didn't really, with him growing up, I didn't realize that he was as smart as he is. He's incredibly smart. And he is working for a company here in Nampa where he's just moving kind of really quickly through the, because he's just, he, he, knows he, he knows his stuff. And he hasn't been taught or trained, but he knows it. He learns quickly. Very, uh, you know, he's, he's doing a great job with his job and he's taking care of his family really good. Very, very smart individual. My youngest, Everett, is very perseverant. He's, uh, of all of our kids, he's the one who went on a mission, you know. Um, he, he's passionate about when he wants to do stuff. He's very passionate about it. So, you know, he, uh, he's looking right now to maybe try to get another job. And so he's excited about the options he's thinking about hiring on with the, with the railroad. And, and I explained to him, uh, you know, your grandpa was a railroader. You know, it's not, it's not easy work, you know, but he said, but they pay good dad. So, I mean, so he's going to apply and we'll see how that goes. But he's, if he says he's going to do something, he gets it done. He really does. He's, uh, he loves his mom dearly. I'm not saying he doesn't love me, but he will do anything for his mom. I think what I'm most proud of with my family, you know, which would be me and Lisa and, and then our children, is that we have we have good moments together. We really do. There's just, there's some of those moments when when it's kind of a struggle, um, and that's okay. You know, you're going to have problems. You're going to have differences of opinion and whatnot. But I recall some times after we moved into this house, there was a time that we went down in the basement and kind of moved the furniture along to the uh, to the walls, and and we uh, there was like a program on the radio, Solid Gold Saturday Night or something like that. And so Lisa and I would go down with our kids sitting on the furniture and we would dance to this music, this old time music, you know, that we grew up with. And our kids just loved it. They just loved watching us do that. But uh, we, the, the kids are, we can count on them. If we're not gonna be here for whatever reason, they'll step in and, and help out with each other and they, they take care of each other. So 
Best piece of advice I think I can give to my posterity is, uh, as mentioned before, is be kind to people and be strong, uh, focused. When you make a decision, follow through with that decision. And, and I'm not always the best at that, but I, I do try hard to make sure that I follow through with those decisions. I want for my loved ones to be loved ones themselves. With their, they, I want them to have uh, great experience with their families. Um, I want them to understand that I know that if they currently don't have family, that that potential is still there for them. You know, that they, depending on what they choose to do, they can, they can still have that opportunity. I, uh, I want them to, to know that they have to be, everybody has a, a role in a relationship and they have to understand what their role is and it's not a one-sided role that they need to, to work together. As a message to my children, Spencer, Lindsay, Kendall, and Everett, I want you all to know how much I love you and how proud I am of what you've become and the strength that you have and the parents that those of you who have children are. I'm so proud of you for that. I want you all to know that I've worked hard to do the best that I can to be the best possible dad that I could be. I'm sure there's so much more that I can still do. And, but I love each and every one of you with so much. And I know, I think you guys all know that I do. And at times you see me where I'm not so talkative, I may be grumpy, but you know deep down that I do love you and I'm so grateful for the fact that we have you in our lives. It is, it's amazing to be a parent to the four of you and I'm so grateful for that. To my grandchildren, grandsons I guess, or I guess I should get grandchildren just in case I end up having any granddaughters later on down the road. I love each and every one of you and, and it's such an amazing blessing to have you in my life, in our lives. We're so glad that we have you and, and that, that you're with us. Um, and that we can celebrate things with you, whether it be um, dinners out for birthdays or going to on, on trips, uh, if we do, or, or even taking, taking you in to spend a week with us while your parents go on vacation or whatever. We just want, I want you to know how much that I love you and that your grandma loves you and how much, how important you are in our lives. And that's what I want for all of you is just to know and feel of that love.